So in this tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to the advanced quarterly financial model here at StarterFinancialModel.com. Essentially, this is a fully integrated financial model that builds financial projections over a five-year period. So looking at the tabs here, you can see that there is an Assumptions tab. And the data from this tab establishes a foundation for the remaining revenue and expense drivers, which can be found on the blue color tabs here. There are three scenarios that you can use for this model. The normal scenario, the slightly pessimistic scenario, and then we also have a slightly optimistic scenario. And these scenarios are over here. And ideally, all three should be filled out so you can prepare for best and worst case scenarios. And finally, you can also conduct sensitivity analysis here to see how changes in key variables affect the overall bottom line. And we'll be looking at that later. So the goal here is that you're not just guessing as to what your revenues and costs will be. Instead, you are generating assumptions that build revenue and cost drivers. And the key here is that these assumptions can be tested and tweaked at any time. They're not just wild forecasts. So the light green colored cells are inputs. And in this example, we'll be building a model for a brick and mortar based company. Uh, keep in mind though that this model can be used for a subscription, a manufacturing, or a product based company. So the assumptions are organized into four sections. On the far left here, you have the actual assumptions that are used to power the model and most of the data is pulled from the other sections except for a few inputs here and there and the remaining sections as I showed you before hold the data for the various scenarios so if you look at the normal scenario here we want to start with determining the total available market in other words if you owned a coffee shop what is the total market where our shop is located how many people or walking by your store each day. Then you have a particular niche or segment you're operating, operating in. Perhaps it's for cheap stop and go coffee and you've done your research and believe that you can obtain 90% of the market. So let me go ahead and change this to 90%. Go ahead and change that on, on all the uh, scenarios here. All right. And next you want to go ahead and enter your beginning price prices here. So let's say that this is just for regular drip coffee and this is for some sort of bulk item. And then you want to enter the yearly growth for these assumptions here, which is the price, the units sold, and then the cost. And you enter those assumptions over here. And then I put in some other revenue here. This could be from some sort of um, advertising you have for another local business, for example, within your storefront. So let's go ahead and move on to expenses. So you start with employees here and you start by entering the number of employees and you can enter part-time employees using decimal points. And then you want to enter the wages and then also the additional costs here such as bonuses recruiting cost of living increase taxes etc this is all pretty straightforward it's just time consuming but fortunately many of the numbers will stay constant as a percentage of total wages so we keep going down here we have the direct expenses or the cost of goods sold and then we have the sales and marketing expenses. And then finally we have the interest rate for the for loans and cash in the bank. We have the tax rate as well as a few balance sheet assumptions. So when filling this out for the first time, you really want to focus on the market. Those are where the big swings will come into play. Where do you think you'll fit in? Can you hit those numbers? Don't worry about whether you're going to sell your product for $1.99 or $2.50. That's where the scenarios come into play. Just focus on a range. For example, use $1.50 for the pessimistic scenario, $1.99 for the normal scenario, and $2.50 for the optimistic. That information, coupled with an extensive SWOT and market analysis, will help determine how much you can spend, how much funding you need up front, and most importantly, whether your business model is viable. 
essentially we were putting numbers to your business model. Okay, so let's say for whatever reason you entered all those numbers wrong and need to start over. You can delete all the input cells on a worksheet by pressing Control P. Let me just show you that real quick. Control P. And again, you can do use this on any worksheet, and this is just really a quick shortcut. So I don't want to save this. Go ahead and pull this back up. Okay, well that's it for the assumptions tab. This worksheet accounts for about 80% of the inputs. So rest assured, we'll be getting to the analysis soon. Speaking of which, we'll return to the assumptions tab when we begin conducting scenario and sensitivity analysis. So moving along, you don't need to enter any inputs for the revenue or the employees tab. This data is all calculated from the assumptions. And on the expenses tab, you can see here that there are a few miscellaneous expenses that need to be added in, such as rent, phone, supplies, that sort of thing. On the funding tab, you need to enter any notes or loans received as well as their repayment schedules. And you also need to enter any outside funding down here such as seed funding. Then next tab we have capital expenditures. So let's say we had to buy $20,000 worth of equipment that will depreciate over five years in 2013. And then in 2015, we'll have to purchase another $20,000 worth of equipment. And again, that'll depreciate over five years. And for now, let's just go ahead and assume that we don't dispose of any of the equipment. All right, well, that concludes the revenue and expense drivers. Let's go ahead and move on to the financial statements themselves. So you want to start with the uh, balance sheet, and you want to enter the uh, starting balances here. So just to keep this simple, we'll just say that we start off with $500,000 in cash, which will raise our current assets as well as our owner's equity. So one of the most important things that you need to take note of is that the balance sheet balances. That is that the assets equal liabilities plus equity. So I have a check sum down here indicating that, actually let me look here, this is probably a very minimal difference. Yeah. So again I have a check sum down here that indicates that it does. So let's say for example I had entered only 300,000 here. You can see that it throws the entire balance sheet off. Okay, so let's jump back over to the income statement here, and you can see the, the bottom line. And then finally, on the cash flow statement, you need to make sure that the closing balance is positive both for the year and for the quarter. Now if it is negative, you'll need to find additional funding, raise revenues, and our costs, or else you won't be able to pay your short-term liabilities, and eventually your long-term liabilities will catch up to you. So after all the data is entered, you want to go ahead and press Control o on your keyboard to calculate the correct interest expense. And most financial models have to address circular references, which for simplicity is when functions indirectly become dependent on one another. And this can cause problems unless dealt with correctly, which is why we needed to recalculate the interest expense. So next we have the summary tabs. We have ratio analysis, DuPont analysis, variance analysis, and then the uh, common size income statement. And we also have some simple charts here at the front, the burn rates, revenue breakdown, and the uh, revenue growth. Then we have an overall summary tab here, and this can be used with your business model when you make pitches to investors. So at this point, there's plenty of analysis that we can conduct. Let's go back and look at the profitability ratios. As you can see here that the net income is pretty low in relation to the total revenue. So let's, let's go and see why that is. So if you look at the ratios here, 
you can see that the uh, net income margin is dropping. So why is that? And we can actually see that the sales and marketing expenses are increasing. So let's take a look at the common size balance sheet. Or I'm sorry, the common size uh, income statement. We can see that, let's see what's going on here. Well, we can see that the s and expenses, sales and marketing expenses are increasing. And that is mostly due to our employee costs. Now, do we really need all those employees? Could some of them go part-time? Could we drop wages without losing too much talent? So let's drop some of our employees to look and see the net effect. So first, I like to start by looking at the summary here and just taking a quick glance at the net income. See what happens when we tweak some of these assumptions. Take that down to one. Drop this person all together. Let's take this down to part time. Probably don't need a third person there. Okay, so let's see the net effect of that. Look at the summer here. So this raised it significantly. Look at the ratios. It's still dropping but our net income is rising. So do you see how easy that is to tweak? Investors love this. They want to be able to go in and make minor tweaks like that to see how your model responds. This is what's called sensitivity analysis. That is, how does the change of a single variable affect the bottom line? Then, of course, it's easy to check the scenario analysis. You can just go over here and just change this to optimistic. You can see that the numbers changed and you can see how that affects the bottom line here and then changes to pessimistic and again you can see how that affects the bottom line anyhow you want to continually check your assumptions and then once you have your base numbers set for each scenario you can continue to tweak your model with any additional research you uncover eventually you'll be able to see if your business is worth investing your time and money in and remember, things change, especially in the early years. Take these numbers for what they are, projections. As your business progresses, update your model. See where you should be investing time in and where you should try to cut costs. Let this model, which is essentially a mathematical representation of your business strategy, guide you. All right, well, that's it for now. If you have any questions, please email me. Thanks for watching.